was here yesterday or watched online, Bishop Vaughn, did she set fire to our bones or what? To our spirits, to our hearts, to everything. And so I want us to, so they said they want to play this video. So let's just watch the video. And our wonderful Bishop Coletta Vaughn will be back on stage to just intensify the fire that she set yesterday. Please welcome her when she comes up stage. But let's have the video first. Thank you so much, Ma, for being here. Jay Vaughn is the senior pastor of the Holy Ghost Cathedral Church, an apostle of Go Tell It Evangelical Ministry worldwide. For the last 40 years, Apostle Coletta J. Vaughan has been a trailblazer and forerunner among women in ministry. In 1984, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a divine encounter took place. Bishop Vaughan met a man, the Most Reverend Benson Idahosa, Church of God Mission, Benicity, Nigeria, who would impact her life and ministry forever. Bishop Vaughan was consecrated to the office of Bishop on November 5, 1995 by Archbishop Benson Idahosa. He shared the mantle of his apostolic ministry with her until the Lord called him home in 1998. She is the founder and chancellor of Kingdom and Faith Bible College in Detroit, Michigan, a two-year training school for ministers and church leaders President of International Institute of Expansion, Women Who Saw, Dean at Destiny School of Ministry, Holy Spirit Institute, and much more. From answering the call of God in 1974 to her elevation as a bishop on November 5, 1995, in the West African country of Nigeria, Bishop Vaughan has poured herself into the lives of congregations and is among the great company of last-day apostles, sounding the trumpets, calling the Church of Jesus Christ back to faith in God, with signs, wonders, and miracles, and authentic demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. She is the mother of two beautiful, gifted daughters, with five grandchildren and a multiple number of sons and daughters in the body of Christ, than Noah as a mother in Zion. With a standing ovation, we welcome Bishop Pauletta J. Vaughan to B Women's Conference 2023. I don't hear you. Praise the Lord. Shake yourself. Shake, 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 shake. Come on, get the blood running, get the blood flowing, get the blood moving. Shake, shake, shake. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hasn't this been wonderful? It's amazing how God will connect our lives together as you live. Uh, I'm excited about what God is doing in this place. On last night, while we were ministering, the Spirit of the Lord gave me a word uh, for our host. Can we honor her this morning? And um, as I was ministering to her, as the Lord was ministering to her, the Spirit of the Lord gave me a word. And I just began to prophesy that word over her. And he said, put your mantle on her. And uh, he said, Holy Spirit said, whatever I've poured in you, you ought to pour in her. And it is an honor for me to be in this place 
to see what we call succession. So just stretch your hands toward her. The Lord says, even as older women are leaving the earth to go to be with the Lord, as one queen is leaving, God is raising up another queen. And that she will walk the nation with wisdom, with strategies. That he will pronounce favor upon her and the offspring, both naturally and spiritually. And that not one word that will come from her mouth will fall to the ground. I want you to open your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. It is important that we cover her. It is important that we cover her in prayer, not compete with her, not be angry or offended by her, but that we cover her as we watch the elevation of the Holy Ghost in our life. For surely she will walk the nations of this world and that the spirit of the living God has favored her even in her mother's womb, that she would be the announcement and the sound of Pentecost, that she would be the announcement and the sound of prosperity, that she would be the announcement and the sound of the supernatural power of Almighty God. So we cover her now in the mighty name of Jesus, that all that God has put in me spiritually that all that God has put in me educationally that all that God has allowed me to experience in his word that the wisdom the revelation of knowledge that he has placed in my life that God you have asked me to pour into this young woman and so today we lay our hands upon her and around her we stretch our lives to water our faith that her faith will never fail. That her body will remain strong and sound. That no sickness, no disease shall ever come nigh her body. That she will be well and healthy and sound of mind. And that whatever God you have promised her. And whatever you have asked of her. Shall surely come to pass. In the days of her life. And she will live long and live old and be wealthy and well respected. And we are honored to have her as the mother in this house. And we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Clap your hands and say amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and say hallelujah. That was a powerful session that the Lord just gave us with the men of God. Women, I want to take a moment. I was going to do this tomorrow, but I'm going to do it now because I believe it's the right moment. Our primary purpose in this life is to be filled with all of the fullness of God. Say that with me. My primary purpose in this life is that I might be filled with all of the fullness of God and everything else is secondary. One of the challenges that I have with women is that we don't really know how we are created. We don't really know our strengths or our weaknesses. We don't really know our assets or our liabilities. And we don't fully understand that in being created in the image and the likeness of God, he gave each of us different temperaments and different personalities. We are not all the same. And that is by creative design. So for the next few moments, I want to 
share with you about the temperaments from the Bible. What these temperaments are, what they mean to you, your strengths, your weaknesses. Because oftentimes, it is our temperament that prevents us from being filled with the fullness of God. Some things we think are the devil. They are not. They are our own weaknesses, our own liabilities, that we must learn how to nurture and cultivate and build up in ourselves, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. There are four major temperaments. Somebody say four. Say it loud. There are four major temperaments. There are multiple personalities, but there are four major temperaments. And we're going to see them in the scripture. And I want to pour into the women and the men who are here also online. When I know myself better, when I know me better, when I know my strength, my weakness, when I know me better, then I can approach God. I can move in the things of God very differently, very confidently. I want us to understand that being filled with the fullness of God is a lifetime journey. It is a lifetime effort to be filled with the length, the depth, the breadth, and the height of the love of God is a lifetime journey. And you must work on yourself. You must work on your personality. You must work on your temperament. You must work on your strengths, but you must also confront your weaknesses. Many times what we find that bothers us in another person is a weakness in us. And I wanted to share some things with you. Go with me to Proverbs. Proverbs. Are you here? Are you with me today? Hallelujah. We honor Pastor, po Pastor Podjo this morning. Oh my God, he was so rich, so wonderful. It was good to hear the men share. But I really want to dive deeply in women and our temperaments and how the Holy Spirit can help us with ourselves. Oftentimes we want to help our husbands and our, we want to help our children, but really we need help with ourselves. Some mornings I am praying and I say, Holy Spirit, help me today with me. Sometimes it's not the employer. Sometimes it's not the government or the pastor or the sister on the worship team. Sometimes it's me. Help me with me. Holy Spirit, help me with me. Many times we do much prayers for others. But when do we say, Holy Spirit, help me with me? Help me with my mouth. Help me with my attitude. Help me with my behavior. Help me not to talk so much. Help me with my emotions. Holy Spirit, help me. Let's practice that. Can we practice that? I don't want you to be afraid of this. Let's practice it. Let's say it together. One, two, three. Holy Spirit, help me with me. I don't think I have everybody. I want everybody, men, women, everybody. This is a sincere prayer. Holy Spirit, help me with me. Don't just 
help my husband. Don't just help my child. Don't just help me with me. Because oftentimes, I sabotage myself. Oftentimes, my own conversation, my own words, my own mouth, my own approach is detrimental to my own success. Holy Spirit, write it down. Pray it every day. Help me with me. What is in me that is not for you? What is it in me that you want to strengthen? Or what is it in me that you want to remove? Is it fear? Is it doubt? Is it anxiety? And oftentimes, it is our temperament that lends itself to our weaknesses. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit helps us with our weaknesses. We don't often like to discuss our weaknesses. We don't want people to see our weaknesses. But one of the primary reasons that God has given us his Holy Spirit is to help us with our weaknesses. That means that we all have them. That means that I have weaknesses. That means that you have weaknesses. And often our weaknesses are being fueled by our temperament. Romans chapter number 8, 26. Thank you, media. That Holy Spirit helps us with and in our weaknesses. Look at, at Proverbs for just a moment. And we're going to go to chapter 30. And I'm going to teach this very quickly. We won't be able to do a deep dive but it's all going to point toward us being strengthened. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you that you are our friend and our helper. Help us now to share this word that it may shift us and strengthen us in Jesus' name. Proverbs 30, verse 11. There is a generation that curses its father. And does not bless its mother. There is a generation that is pure in its own eyes. Yet it is not washed from its own filthiness. There is a generation. Oh how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation, verse 14, whose teeth are like swords and whose fangs are like knives to devour the poor from off of the earth and the needy from among men. Amen. Now, these are four different groups of people that are humanly created in the image and likeness of God. But after the fall, we took on a fallen nature. Our temperaments, each of us have been given a temperament by God. But after the fall, it became more negative than positive. That is why when we are born again, we receive a new nature, a new spirit. But our temperament now has to be trained or strengthened to do what is right because it is accustomed to doing what is evil. So when we say that there are generations, he's talking about people. So there are people that their temperament is to curse their father and not bless their mother. We were talking about honor. There's a group of people, their temperament is to dishonor. There is a generation 
who are a people who are pure in their own eyes. They are very, very self-conceited, self-consumed. They are hard to discipline. They can never see anything wrong that they do because they are always right in their own eyes. There is a group of people, verse 13, that are lofty in their own eyes. Their eyelids are lifted up. They are very haughty. They, they see things from a very high level and they are condescending or may look down upon others. It's their temperament. And then there is a group of people whose teeth are like swords. They are very strong. They talk very strong. Uh, they don't mean necessarily to be devouring, but their words and their boldness is so strong. And many times they, re they repel people because of their strength. Now these four groups of people are in this room right now. These four people are in our nations. They're in our homes. They're in our families. They're in our churches. What I want to do in these next few moments is to share with you how the Holy Spirit can help you to eradicate the weaknesses of your temperament. We use Holy Spirit for church, but we don't use Holy Spirit for our weaknesses. Holy Spirit is God. He is God. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He is equal with the Father and equal with the Son. But he doesn't just come to make us stronger in our strengths. Holy Spirit comes to help us with our weaknesses so that our weaknesses does not abort God's plan for our lives. Many times it is not the devil that is aborting our lives. It is our own temperament. It is our own weaknesses. It is all things that are built within us that we will not confront. Therefore, we are unable to be filled with the fullness of God because we have this internal weakness, internal liability that fights us, fights our success, fights us in our relationships, fights us in our finances. And God has given us his Holy Spirit to help us with our weaknesses. I don't know about you, but I am grateful to God for the Holy Spirit that helps me with me. I want Holy Spirit to help me with me. Sometimes I say, Holy Spirit, help me with them. But he said, no, it's you. Help me with my husband. No, it's you. Let me help you with you. How many of you want help with yourself? Let me see your hands. Wave at me. Wave at me. I want to see your hands. How many of you know you need help with yourself? How many of you know that your weaknesses, you can get help from the Holy Ghost? Let me see. How many of you know what your weaknesses are? Let me see your hands. No lie. Come on. No lie. Oh. How many of you know what your weaknesses are? Lift your hands. And every time you get into a situation it is your weakness that sabotages your success come on who am I talking to wave at me am I talking to you talk back to me am I talking to you what if I told you that from today your weakness would never be your weakness again what if I told you that from today you will see your weakness from afar off and be able to conquer it? How many of you want to conquer your weaknesses? Let's start with the first generation. The first generation says that they are a generation that curses their father and does not bless their mother.
I want to give you the four names of the temperaments. Are you ready to write them down? All right, let's write them down. The first one that does that curses his father and does not bless its mother is called the phlegmatic. P H L E G M A T I C. They can put that on the screen. The phlegmatic. The phlegmatic. Let's look at the next one. A group of people that are pure in their own eyes, but yet not washed from their own filthiness. This group of people are called sanguines. S A N G U I N E. Sanguines. Then there is a group that are lofty in their own eyes. This group is called melancholics. M-E-L-A-N-C-H-O-L-Y or L-I-C. Melancholics. And then the fourth one, the generation, the teeth like swords, I know this group very well, is called cholerics. C-H-O-L-E-R-I-C. So we have the phlegmatic, we have the sanguine, we have the melancholy, and we have the choleric. Let me start with me. The last one is a group of people who are born into leadership and have strong personalities. Both men and women, boys and girls. You will be able to see this develop in a child very early. Sometimes it's the oldest sibling, sometimes it's the middle sibling, or sometimes it's the only child, but they are strong. They have what we call a strong will. This person, this child, is a leader. However, without the power of the Holy Spirit, this person can be very divisive. This person can argue a lot, find fault with everything, hard to satisfy. This person is a leader that is task-oriented, but not always concerned about the people that do the task. So as long as the task is done, many times the choleric will turn around and see that the team has not kept up even though the task was completed because this person is more concerned about the task than the people themselves. Now in the Bible, this person is Paul the apostle. In the Bible, Paul is a choleric. Paul, which we know was Saul, at one point had teeth like knives. Remember that he was a murderer. Remember that he killed people. Remember that he devoured people and took them to be presented to the lions, to be murdered. But then the Holy Ghost came in his life. And not only was his name changed, but his temperament was strengthened, not in the weaknesses, but in the strength of leadership and not in destroying people. Now, as I walk through this right quickly, I want you to identify what is your temperament. And once you know what your temperament is, then we know where you need to be strengthened. All of us do not need to be strengthened in the same areas. We all need to be strengthened in the area of our weaknesses. What is my weakness? I am task driven. I want the task to be done. But over the years, I've had to learn to cultivate the people, to nurture the people, because I cannot do the task without the people. So I must cultivate, I must disciple, I must nurture. So my weakness was not loving the people as much as I loved the, the assignment or the task. 
Now that was my weakness. Let's talk about the melancholy. The melancholy in the scripture is David. David was a melancholy. Melancholies are very gifted. They are musicians. They are hairstylists. They are artists. They are dancers. They are accountants. They are given to details. They love everything perfect. A melancholy loves everything perfect. And so their weakness is that if it is not perfect, it's never good enough. So if you are working with a melancholy, every I must be dotted. Every T must be crossed. If you are handling money, every penny must be accounted for. But remember that this is a weakness if you are dealing with other people. Because everyone does not see details like you see details. And so you end up causing friction or you end up having too high expectations for people who are not temperamented like you. And so what happens is now there is controversy or there is offense because the melancholy is driven by perfection. And when the melancholy does not see perfection, the melancholy is very hard to deal with. Woo! I use this in premarital counseling. Oftentimes we marry people and we don't know their temperaments. Oftentimes we take on jobs and we don't know the temperaments. So what I am teaching you is not just for church. You can apply temperaments to your children. You can apply temperaments to your ministry. You can apply this to every area because this will show us where people are weak and where people are strengthened. Let's talk about the phlegmatic. The phlegmatic, oh my goodness, I love the phlegmatic, was Abraham in the Old Testament and Barnabas in the New Testament. The phlegmatic, thank you, the phlegmatic does not like controversy. The phlegmatic does not like confrontation. The phlegmatic is always trying to keep the peace. And many times the phlegmatic will be silent when they need to be talking because it will make them look bad. If you remember the story of Barnabas and Paul and how they fell out over John Mark, Barnabas was always trying to keep the peace. And Paul, the choleric, said, I don't care anything about peace. If I take John Mark with me, he's going to destroy my assignment. Remember that the choleric is driven by the assignment. Remember that the phlegmatic is always driven by how they look. Do people like me? When you run into people that are always concerned about how they appear to look to others, that is usually a phlegmatic. A phlegmatic does not like controversy. A phlegmatic will stand in the background. And let the choleric step up and solve the issue. While the phlegmatic hangs back and looks good. <laughs> and oftentimes in a relationship, you'll have a phlegmatic and a choleric. And the choleric is the bad parent. And the phlegmatic is the good parent. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Go to your mother. <laughs> because the man is a phlegmatic. He doesn't like controversy, doesn't like confusion. But the woman is strong and she will correct the problem. But then the child sees a good parent, a bad parent. Well, really, you have a phlegmatic and a choleric married together. Does this help you? Eat? Are you learning something? Wave at me if you're learning something. Have you seen yourself yet? <laughs> Amen. So you have the choleric, 
you have the melancholy and you have the phlegmatic. Remember now, the phlegmatic is often a procrastinator. That is a weakness with the phlegmatic. The phlegmatic will wait till the last minute. Who am I talking to? <laughs> Who am I talking to? See, it's not a demon of procrastination. It's your temperament. You don't like confrontation. And if it looks like it's going to be disruptive at all, you will wait until the last minute. So there's no prayer for procrastination, the demon of procrastination. No, it is a weakness that is in your temperament. Now let's look at the last one. Are you ready? The sanguine. The sanguine is my beloved apostle Peter. The sanguine is fun to be around. Always talking. The life of the party. Never gets anything done. <laughs> Makes all kinds of promises. <laughs> Everybody loves the sanguine. But the sanguine does not complete assignments. The sanguine can have 15 new projects and none of them are finished because that is a weakness with the sanguine. Peter, Peter, Peter the apostle, Peter was so mighty and so effervescent and so full of life. Until it came time for Jesus to be crucified. And he disappeared. Watch for the one on your team that has promised to do so many things. And when it's time to produce, they have disappeared. Come on, talk to me. Watch for the one that says, oh, I'll do that. Oh, yes, I can do that. Oh, yes, I'm good at that. Oh, yes, and they volunteer. But when the time comes for them to produce, they are nowhere to be found. All four of these temperaments need the Holy Spirit. All four of these the melancholic, the phlegmatic, the choleric, the sanguine. Because this is the area that you will discover your weakness. My weakness was not loving the people even though I was getting the task done. In my children, I have two beautiful, amazing daughters. And I raised them in the things of God. They're strong. They're powerful young women. They're academic. They're educated. Their careers are amazing. But one of the things that as I was putting in strength, I had to remember to love them. I had to remember to nurture them. What I found out is that where I am weak, this is where Holy Spirit wants to strengthen me. Many times we are praying about something. We are asking God to help us, asking God to deliver us. And your temperament, you will never be delivered from it. But once you discover your weaknesses, the Holy Ghost will come and build you up in that area. But you cannot deny your temperament. You cannot act as if it is demonic or it is evil. It is who you are. It is your DNA. But you must cultivate your strengths. And you must give your weaknesses to the Holy Ghost. Now this will help to build you in every area. Now let's go back to Ephesians chapter number 3. My time is leaving me. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter number 3. Watch this. Ephesians 3. Are you here? Are you learning something? Talk back to me. I said, are you learning something? Aha. Uh -huh. Did you see yourself? How many cholerics are here? How many cholerics? Let me wave your hand. If you, are, if you are a choleric, let me see your hand. All right. Wave them high. Don't be ashamed. <laughs> yeah, all right. You have teeth like knives. Come on, wave your hands. You have to work on that. 
That's a weakness. That's a weakness. That's where you have to be strengthened. How many sanguines are in the room? But going to be more than everybody. Come on, get them up high. How many sanguines wave at me? You, you're the life of the party. Come on. Come on, wave at me. But you have trouble completing assignments. Come on, come on. Come on, wave at me. Don't be ashamed. You show up and the, and the, meet, the prep meeting takes on fire. You show up and everybody is glad to see you. Come on, wave your hands, sanguines. But when it comes time to completing assignment, you have so many other assignments that you never complete one. Who are you? Let me see your hands. Come on. Melancholies. Where are my melancholies? You are the perfectionist. Let me see you. All right. You are the perfectionist. How many people do you irritate? How many times have you irritated your children because their room is not so t -t -t tight? How many, how many times have you irritated your co-workers because they don't do things the way you do it? Come on, come on, where are my melancholies? But you are gifted. You are smart. But it is perfection is your weakness. I said perfection is your weakness. When we talk about being strengthened, we're talking about identifying our weaknesses. Because God is not strengthening your strengths. It is our weaknesses. It is the area we fail ourselves. It is the area that we fail ourselves. It's the area that we disappoint ourselves that needs to be strengthened. This is why he has given us his Holy Spirit to strengthen us where we are weak. It also helps us to deal with others. When I am dealing with a sanguine, I know they are nodding and smiling but I know I better get a phlegmatic just in case because that sanguine may not come through. That sanguine will have a flat tire or the sanguine has to go to the hospital. That sanguine will have another phone call and what they have promised I'm not going to get. So just in case I can rely on that phlegmatic because that phlegmatic is going to come through. That melancholy is going to come through. So as a leader, I find out that my sanguine will promise and sometimes will come through. But I need a backup plan because the sanguine has a weakness over promising. Over committing. That is your weakness. And that is where you have to be strengthened. That is where you must be strengthened. In the area of overcommitting. You want to do it. You're talented to do it. But you don't have the time. And so you need the Holy Spirit to say, don't volunteer. You need the Holy Spirit to say, uh-uh, not this time. Don't put your name on that list. This time, let someone else do it. You volunteered the last five times. <laughs> Don't you volunteer again until next year, 2024. <laughs> because you know you are already overcommitted. All right, here's the last one. How many phlegmatics in the room? You are a procrastinator. Come on, get your hands up. Don't be ashamed now. Come on, come on. This is your weakness. But you are a great dependable leader. But you don't like controversy. So you know your weakness is that things go wrong too long. Things 
that you should correct, you don't correct. And it's not because you don't see that it's going wrong. But your temperament, because you are concerned with how you look to others. You would rather not be seen as a bad guy. You want to be seen as a nice girl, church girl, saved girl, Holy Ghost girl, anointed girl. But things around you are unraveling because you will not confront it. That is your weakness. You are able to lead. You are able to, you are very dependable. But you don't like confrontation. And you are easily offended. Where are my phlegmatics? Come on, phlegmatics, wave at me. As long as you look good, you in it. As long as it makes you look celebrated, you are there. But the moment you get a rebuke, you step back. I'm not singing on the choir anymore. Well, what happened? I don't want to talk about it. I'm not going to serve in protocol anymore. Well, what happened? You are one of our best. You are one of our faithful ones. Why aren't you coming back? Because she rebuked me in public. I don't have to do that. I'm a grown woman. She talked to me like I was a child. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? This is why Paul says that you must be filled with all of the fullness of God. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 3. Because of our temperaments, because of the area of our weaknesses, we now must be filled with all of the fullness of God. Watch this. At Christ, verse 17, let's move to verse 15. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you, verse 17, being rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all the saints. What is the width, the length, and the depth, and the height. And to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge. That you might be filled with all of the fullness of God. And so no matter what my temperament is. Maybe I don't need the depth of God, but I need the height. Because that's where my weakness is. Maybe I don't need the length, but I need the breadth. So different parts of God, different components of God's essence, different components of God's nature are needed differently by all of us. We must be able to identify what is the area that is empty. Is it my personality? Is it the way I speak to people? Is it the way that I don't like confrontation? Is it the way that I show up late everywhere I go? Why do I do that? Okay, wait, I saw something. I... <laughs> wait, 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 I felt something. How many of you are late everywhere? Let me see your eyes. Get your hands up. You are late. Look at your names. How many of you know that's a weakness? But it's coming from your temperament, from, your, from the way you don't respect time. Listen to me. If you don't respect time, you'll never have money. Everyone that I know that is late is broke.
Because if God cannot trust you with time, he cannot trust you with wealth. From this moment, rebuke that habit. From this moment, denounce the habit of being late. In the name of Jesus, I denounce the habit of being late. In the name of Jesus, I will prosper. I will be wealthy. Money will come to me. I denounce the habit of being late. In Jesus' name. It is a bad habit, and it comes with your temperament. Sanguines and phlegmatics. You have to learn to respect time. This is the area that you must be filled with the fullness of God. Let's run over to Romans chapter number 8, and I, I will finish there. We'll finish up tomorrow night. Is that all right? Are you ready for this? Are you learning something? I know you've been here a long time, so I'm going to hurry. Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. Hallelujah. And when you get to Romans chapter number 8, say, I'm there. If you're on your way, say, I'm on my way. And I want you to read this. But verse 26, likewise, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Read that with me. Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Say it one more time. Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps us with our weaknesses. Say it one more time. Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps us with our weaknesses. Now this time make it personal. Likewise, the Holy Ghost helps me with my weaknesses. No, you're not saying it loud. Where do you need to be strengthened? You need to be strengthened in the area of your weaknesses. If you are already a woman of faith and you don't have to conquer fear, then the Holy Spirit doesn't have to help you with faith. But if you are a woman of fear and you are a woman that carries anxiety, you are concerned about things coming out right because you don't want to look bad. That's a weakness. And Holy Spirit will fill you with the fullness of God in that area. If you are a person that does not have kindness towards people. You just want the task done. You don't care how the team feels. Then you need the Holy Spirit to fill you with the fullness of God in that area and give you a love for your team, a love for people. If you are a parent that is very stern, you are a woman that you don't like anything out of place. Nobody can do anything unless it's perfect. You're hard to please. Then you need the Holy Spirit to fill you with the fullness of God in that area. It is my weaknesses that are always causing me to fail. Not the devil. Not the devil. We have prayed. We have bind. We have pleaded the blood. And yet we still have the weakness. We have rebuked the devil. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I bind you. I rebuke you. I plead the blood. But the weakness is still there. That is the area you need Holy Spirit to fill you with the fullness of God. Stand on your feet. For the next one minute, I want us to pray in the Holy Spirit. But I want to tell you how to do this. 
without any music, without anything right now, just listen to me. You know your weakness better than anybody. The only person that knows your weakness as well as you, other than God, is the devil. The devil knows our weaknesses. He knows what triggers us. He knows what gets us out from under the anointing. He knows what agitates us. I want you to not pray for your strengths. In this moment, we're going to pray for our weaknesses. Because that's where we need to be strengthened. How have my weaknesses caused me to miss opportunities? How have your weaknesses caused you to miss out on good relationships? When you blame the devil, but it was never the devil. It was your own weakness that came with your temperament. How can Holy Spirit help you today with your weakness? Many times we want the Holy Spirit to help me to cast out devils, help me to heal the sick, help me to climb the mountains, help me to do these mighty things. But I need the Holy Ghost to help me with me. You need the Holy Spirit to help you with you. When you are arguing, you are fussing, you are so angry, that is a weakness. When you, when you are, are, are short-tempered and, and you have no patience, that's a weakness. When you see someone trying and you don't help them to try, that is a weakness. We don't need strength in our strengths. We need strengths in our weaknesses. Open your mouth. Lift your hands. Call your weakness out. No one there but you and God. You want to come to the altar and lay? You want to just for two minutes. We have maybe two. Our time is up. You have about 30 seconds. But call your weakness out. My weakness is being late. My weakness is being too perfect. My weakness is not confronting things soon. My weakness is procrastination. My weakness is not doing things when I should. My weakness is over committing myself. This is my weakness, God. And Holy Spirit today, this is where I need to be filled with the fullness of God. I need to be filled in the area where I am weak, where I continue to fail. I want you now, Holy Spirit, to bring me the wisdom to defeat my weakness. Bring me the skills to defeat my weakness. Bring me the right relationships that will help me to mentor me in my weakness. I need to be strengthened in my weakness. And today, in the name of Jesus, I call my weakness my strength. In the name of Jesus, I call on now the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead to now begin to quicken me in the area of my weaknesses. I will no longer cover them up. I will no longer try to present it as if it is already right. No, today, Holy Spirit, I come naked. I open myself up to my weaknesses that that is where you will find and you will pour your spirit out in that area. Now, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that every woman, every man, every boy, girl that's watching this will be able to be accountable for the area of their weaknesses. But from today, they will be filled with the fullness of God. No longer will that bring us shame. No longer will this weakness embarrass us. No longer will this weakness bring shame and disappointment. But from today, from today, I shall receive strength in the area of my weakness. And in the area where I failed, I will now succeed. In the area where I have been embarrassed, I will no longer be embarrassed. In the area where people have talked about me, no longer will they talk about me. From today. I receive strength in the area of my weakness. 
Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. How many of you received this word? Come on. How many of you received this word? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. My primary purpose in this life is that I might be filled with all of the fullness of God.